with recently went over to somebody's house. They're elderly. They're suffering. They have a box of pills on their dresser. Father John, I want to take those. All of them. Can I do that? No, you can't do that. You can't take your life. Jesus decides. You can take medication to help you with comfort and pain, but you can't take your life. Okay, thank you, Father John. About six months ago, got a call. Father John, can you come over? Yeah, just want to talk to you. I'm sick. You have no idea what you're going into, right? You know how that is. You go into something, you have no idea. Man is there, says, Father John, I will take this shot and I will die. Can I do that? I want your blessing. I cannot give you my blessing. I cannot let you do that. Get out of my house. Get out of my house right now. We try to explain. We try to explain the importance of and the meaning of fallen Christ, especially in suffering. Because that's where the brothers, that's where the children are perfected. We're perfected in and through suffering. That's how we come to the glory of God. We gotta suffer and let God redeem us in that. That's how it works. Suffering is the kiss of Christ. Suffering is the kiss of Christ. We don't just do away with people and extinguish them. Fellow priest, a brother, a priest, just had a situation where the baby just died before it was born out of the womb. So the baby had been alive nine months, ready to be born out of the womb. Our, our newspaper said he cannot have an obituary because it's not a human being. It's not a human being until it's out of the womb. The insurance company said you can't get insurance because that's not a human being. And that's what so many people think about our babies and our children. I used an image a number of months ago in preaching. I think it's a beautiful image. It's a Norwegian uh, telling and uh, a tale. But it is that Christ kisses the soul when it is united, when the baby is conceived, and that baby is kissed by Christ. And that baby, that child, you and me, we always remember that kiss. We always remember that kiss. That we're called to glory. That we're called to oneness. That we're called to be brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. You know, as a priest, I hear it all. And someone, when someone comes in and, and uh, confesses an abortion to me. It's just difficult. It's just it's just like they're torn apart. They're just torn apart. And that's both for the men and the women. And we know that there's a lot of reasons that abortion can happen. It's a bad mistake. It's it's a sin against life. We know that that uh, there, can, there can be, you know, uh, just fear what's going to happen in the future. How am I going to do this? I don't want to bring this baby into the situation. It's inconvenient. I can't deal with the inconvenience. Medically, maybe, the, the baby might not be healthy or whatever. Lots of reasons. But it's not letting God's purposes happen. And that is to bring children forth to his glory. Brothers and sisters, you need to help me out with this issue and all these issues. Because it's very, very pervasive in our church, in our world. And we need to come into God's plan for this. And we definitely need forgiveness, especially those who carry that burden. They need to know about forgiveness and how God will offer that. The Catholic Church is reaching out and saying, we're going to bring you back. You're going to live it, you're going to live Jesus, and you're going to forget it. Christ, you're going to forget it. You're going to help me. You're going to help me live this. So we have Rachel Vineyard. It's a ministry in the Catholic Church that helps with that. we got Project Rachel. Please see me. You hear about it, do something about it. You've got to do something about it. You're the ones with the eyes and the ears. I only have two. In this church, we have over 600 eyes and ears each this night to help to bring that healing. So many people feel so ashamed and they're locked in the darkness. Their family members don't even know and they're just living the light. And God wants to bring His embrace.
he wants to bring his children who have made these decisions, who are not living his glory, back into his glory. And it is an amazing person that a lot of you probably last want to see is me as a priest. But that's where we want to go. That's where the forgiveness, the sacramental forgiveness comes through. Remember last week I talked about the cross? It's the, the place of greatest condemnation in the world. It's the condemnation of sin and how we're separated from God. So it's the great, greatest place of condemnation and it's also the greatest place of love. So that's what the sacrament of reconciliation is. is condemning anything that has taken us from Christ. Especially something major. And giving us his love. And he wants to be that for us and do that for us. To live Christ and to forgive whatever needs to be forgiven. And then to live more fully into Christ in the ways that he wants. He wants us to be one. He wants his children to be brought to glory. We have to do this, brothers and sisters. You're seeing it all the time, I believe. Or you, you hear it. It will come up. What will you do when someone wants to take their life when they're older or in the womb or anywhere in between? We respect life. We stand for life. It's true. Jesus' life is true. Doesn't cause pain. Doesn't cause fear. It doesn't cause confusion. It causes glory. 